Okay, Coke, uh, we're getting ready to do, uh, to adjust the uh, tappets. Okay, um, and so we've got our feeler gauges, got a Whitworth spanner to loosen the nut on the adjusters, and we've got our little uh, Allen key, because we bought those Allen key um, uh, adjusters um, so that we can, you know, there's no get rid of that square thing on the top. Uh, oh, and I've taken the uh, primary cover off so that I can turn the engine over on the uh, on the rotor nut, which is just easier than using the kickstart. I can go backwards and forwards, um, just easier. So uh, what I'm going to do, the first thing, so we've got, I think we've got a six thou gap on the inlets and we've got an eight thou gap on the uh, exhaust. Of course, the exhaust is always going to be uh, bigger because of the heat. So it expands more, and that's why the gap's bigger. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn the engine over, and we'll start off doing the two inlets. So I'll turn it over and, and make sure that the, um, the valve's completely closed, and then we'll uh, measure with the feeder gauge and so on. Okay. Okay, so I've... Uh Turn the engine over, making sure that this inlet valve is fully closed. And um, so then I've got my feeder gauge, six thou. It's nice and easy. It's so nice and easy when it's on the bench. <laughs> so much easier than when the, and, and I haven't put the uh, stud in yet that holds the, that holds the rear rocker cover on because that's in the way. So I've deliberately left that off. So we just got a very nice loose sliding fit, which is what we want. Then I'm going to put my Allen key in and hold it. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's done us nicely. Yeah, we've still got a nice sliding fit there. And we've tightened up. See, it's just easier with a, with an Allen key than with holding those little square things. Okay, and there we have it. And what I'll do is, uh, I'll, I'll do all four. So that's set at six. I'll set this one at six and the two exhausts at eight. And then I'll turn the engine over a couple of times and then recheck them all. Uh, obviously, re after it's tightened, you check it because you know it can really move with the as you, as you tighten this nut up i mean that's fine but i will turn the engine over uh and then and then recheck everything yeah so all done now um there's one thing worth mentioning though and that is i was getting a i discovered i was getting a bit of a false reading um and what i was doing i was um the uh the felt tight and with the feeder gauge in and then I tightened everything up, pulled the feeder gauge out and the tap it was obviously way too loose. You know, the, there was obviously too much uh, play, but I couldn't work it out. And what I was doing, the end of the feeler gauge, the far end, the tip, I was putting, if I put it straight on like that, then the tip was going underneath the arm or the rocker arm and that makes it feel tight. Okay, you see that tip there. So I had to turn the feeder gauge sideways to get a proper reading because if it was underneath the tip, that's when it felt it felt twice as uh, uh, you know the tip was underneath the rocker arm. So I can't get to do now. Oh come on! Can't get it in. There we go. If you know if it was jammed underneath the rocker arm, then it feels really tight. Whereas in fact, it's not tight at all. So just uh, just one. So obviously we need to come in more from the side, not to get the feeder gauge jammed underneath the rock around. Okay, uh, but I'll, uh, I've turned everything over a couple of times and everything's good now. Made sure that I haven't got the feeder gauge under the rock around. And uh, we're ready to put the, um, uh, the, the rocker covers on now. And of course, <laughs> the other thing I forgot to mention was do double check that the uh, 
that the valve is fully closed before you um, adjust to tap it. I must admit that I was a bit arrogant, I think, then. Yeah, I've done it so many times. Easy, easy. And uh, I think there was one. This It was actually this one. The, the valve wasn't... Um, it wasn't fully closed and I adjusted it and then turned the engine over and I had a massive gap because the, um, the valve was in fact just beginning to close uh, when I adjusted it. So, you know, so, you know, turn the engine over, make sure that the valve is fully closed before you start adjusting it. An obvious thing, but, you know, uh, I, I just got it wrong. Okay, I'm getting ready to fit the tappets. But before I do that, I'm going to pour some oil down the exhaust uh, side of the head because I know that the oil will then drain down and go down into the tappet blocks. And so we've got lots of oil floating around the tappet blocks, which is very important. Not the uh, inlet side because we know there's the drilling for the oilways that goes then down through the, uh, the the barrels and drains into the crankcase. So if I put any oil in there, it won't it won't go to the tappets. But on the exhaust side, it will drain down and drain onto the tappets. It'll go down the pushrod uh, down the pushrod tunnel. It doesn't matter exactly where this goes because um, of course there are drain holes all around the uh, valves, and uh, so it'll either go straight down the uh, tunnel. Or if it sits around the valves, that's fine because I know that then it will drain from the bottom of the valves down through the drain holes and from there into the down to the tappets again. OK, uh, so I've put some well seal uh, around the uh, on the cylinder head. So I'm going to put the gaskets on. These are for the uh, exhaust rockers. And then, uh, just to be a bit different, so then I've got the the uh, polished covers, but there's no well seal. I have not put well seal on the covers, so I'm just going to pop those on there uh, with the nuts. Now the reason why I haven't put well seal on the covers is, um, come on, <laughs> please. You're on camera. Oh, well, that's typical, isn't it? Don't tell me. There we go. Uh, the reason I've not put it on is because I know that we're going to have to take this off again uh, to adjust the tappets fairly soon after the engine started. And uh, when we do that, then is a good time to put the well seal on. So, uh, you know, just uh, saves a bit of gooey mess. The, because it's well sealed and it never, ever hardens, it will come off okay uh, if you do use well seal, especially if you especially if you just heat it gently. Heat it gently first. That liquefies the um, well seal, and it will just come off. It just um, just saves a bit of um, messing. That's all. Uh, note that there are no washers underneath the exhaust uh, nuts, but there is a washer underneath the inlet. There's no specific torque uh, to do those nuts up, so. Um, I would say just be, uh, you know, don't don't overdo them. And I'll do the same now with the other exhaust and then the inlet, which does have uh, an alloy washer on that central stud. And there we have it. All buttoned up now, the engine, and looking uh, resplendent, looking great. Yeah. Just putting those uh, rocket covers on just uh, finishes everything off. Just uh, by the by, don't over tighten this nut. Um, of course, there's nothing behind it and you can fracture this casing. And also there's no real need to do so because, of course, the engine is tilted forwards. So there's not much chance of oil coming out of this uh, gasket. Obviously, well, less chance than coming out of the, out of the exhaust uh, rockers. Anyway, yep, yeah, so there we are, and so we're all done so mechanically. The last thing we've got to do now is to fit the uh, electronic ignition, uh, and uh, it will be job done. So oh, it's quite exciting now.
Yeah, yeah, great. Really pleased with that. Really pleased. Hurrah.